Are you looking for a quick and easy sewing project that's friendly on your wallet and your silhouette? Well, this cute little waspy corset might be just the thing. Hello friends and welcome or welcome back. I'm Shannon Mix, spooktacular sewist by day, circus artist by night. And today's project is a very quick, simple little project that can be completed hopefully in a couple days from a free pattern and can probably be done from scraps you already have in your fabric stash. So let's get started. The pattern is the Free Amelia Corset by Aura Lynn, and I chose this one because not only is it free and we love that, but also the pattern covers waists from 21 to 53 inches wide, so it's pretty size inclusive, which we love a good size inclusive pattern here on Shannon Makes, so let's go get this printed out. And I just say that it is so nice to have such a small, easy to assemble PDF pattern. There are only three pieces of paper in this whole pattern. And while assembling PDFs do make for some fun, snappy montages, and I love a good editing sesh as much as the next person, but I also love really small PDF patterns that should go together very quickly. So hopefully this should be as easy as one, two, three. All right, so I've got all of the paper pieces cut out and ready to go. And now it's gonna be time to figure out what fabric to make this out of. Now I am thinking that I would like this to be reversible and that it should be fairly easy to do so. So one side could have one color scheme, the other could have another color scheme. The problem is I have three ideas for color schemes. Because the original game plan was to make one side in black and the other side in orange. And then both sides, we're going to get an overlay of this super fun spider print tool, which I found at the thrift store. And as you can see, it's translucent, so the color underneath does show through very nicely. And if you watched my thrifted fabric haul from a few weeks ago, in which I got over 70 yards of fabric for incredible steel, then you'll already kind of know that that was sort of my game plan for this. But the wrench that got thrown into these plans came from one of you, so I blame one of you on this, because somebody commented, you know what, that spider print fabric would look great on top of the purple fabric that you found. And I was like, oh, you know what? It really would. It would look fabulous. So I think what I'm gonna do is lay all of these options out on my table here and put the spider print over everything. We can see how things look and maybe that's gonna help us make some decisions. <laughs> should actually precise though that one of those options does need to go with this dress. This is my Sophie dress. Shh, it's actually not finished right now for me in the present, but by the time you're watching this, it will be finished. But I need one of these options to match with that dress. I'm thinking probably the black version because I already have all of the black buttons over here on this. So. That's what I'm thinking, but let's lay it all out and take a look. So after having looked at this and thought about it for a while, I kind of love all of the combinations, but I think for sure I'm gonna go with the black here because it definitely matches the dress much better. So black on one side, that's for certain. Then the other side have to decide between the purple and the orange. And when I look at it on camera through the viewfinder, I definitely am leaning towards purple. But the problem is that in real life, this purple doesn't look at all like what you're seeing. It's much more muted. I'll try and see if I can get a, a clip that is a little bit more true to real life colors. Whereas the orange, it looks in real life pretty much the same to what I'm looking at right now on the viewfinder. It's uh, much brighter, it pops. There's really like a contrast. So I'm definitely thinking I'm gonna go with orange on one side, black on the other side. And then if I have time, you know, I can always make a second waspy because they're so small and I think they're gonna go together fairly quickly. So that's the plan. These two for the first one, maybe purple for a second one. Ooh. Yeah, ba -da -ba -da. 
all the shit I do for YouTube. <laughs> The game plan for the moment, the most expedient way that I could think about going about this whole process of cutting everything out is I'm just taking a normal pen and I'm just drawing straight on the orange fabric because the black ink shows up very well on the orange fabric, but it's all gonna be hidden once I add this layer on top of it. So I'm not being too precious about it. Just trying to line up the grain and get my seam allowances correct. And then I'm gonna cut these out, use the orange pieces as the pattern pieces to cut out the black because that way I don't have to deal with the hassle of trying to find something that's going to show up against the black fabric. And then once both of those colors are cut out, I can baste this fabric onto them and start to uh, assemble the actual corset. <laughs> Well, I just thumped that tool down on my table and was about to start flatlining it to my pieces here, which are ready to go, when I was suddenly faced with a question. Am I going to try to pattern match this? And the answer came quite quickly. It was a very emphatic no. <laughs> because I value my sanity and my time and it's just for me on this project it is not worth it for me to try to pattern match this corset. I am going to try probably and do some light fussy cutting so trying to purposely center the spider webs so that they're visually pleasing and you can tell that they are spider webs and not just like a chaos of silver lines. So I think especially on the very front panels paying attention to where the spider web is falling in in relation to the panel but I will not be trying to pattern match this and like make the spider webs seamlessly go around my body because while that would be cool I would probably finish this pattern three weeks after Halloween and have to wait till next year to post the video so let's start some very light and fun fussy cutting instead once all my tools cut out, I was faced with a question. Should I flatline the layers or not? And to answer that question, I decided to do a little experiment. So what's the verdict? Well, I've got the basted side over here and the non-basted side next to it for comparison. I did go and take out the basting stitches on the middle panel of the basted one just so we could have kind of a, a more accurate comparison. And if I'm being completely honest, while they're just sitting here flat with no boning in them, they both look a little bit like butt. Corsets really need that boning in there to like hold them taut and get the fabric looking all smooth before it looks good, but if I take my fingers and sort of stretch the fabric taut, kind of imitate that boning channel effect, and I do that on both sides, it's really not noticeable. And thinking about it, I have three, six, 12, 24 panels that I would need to baste. So given that there's such a negligible difference, there doesn't seem to be a huge benefit to basting in this circumstance, and it is not saving me really much time either, I'm going to move right ahead without basting. So now that I've solved the question about to baste or not to baste, we can move right along without basting. <laughs> I will recommend to start by carefully sorting all of your panels out. I have mine all laid out here in the exact order in which I'll be assembling them because there's just a lot of really small pieces and a lot of the panels look very similar to one another. So I'm just trying to idiot proof the process a bit. A 
originally I was gonna assemble the black side of the corsets and then the orange side of the corset separately and then join the two together sort of like an outer layer and a lining layer except that they'd both actually just be outer layers but then I was thinking about it and I realized it would be a bit tricky to properly line up the boning channels on both sides of the corset which you know this being a reverse corset that's kind of important thinking about it I just I think it was gonna be super fiddly to try and make that look really good so instead I went back to my tried and true method of corset assembly the welt method with the welt method you construct all of the layers of the corset at once panel by panel starting at the back and working your way around the torso to the front this makes it easy to build the boning channels into the seams as you go and that helps guarantee that your corset will look good on both sides Plus, in comparison to some other more complicated methods of corset construction, you just sew each seam one time instead of doing it over and over, which also makes it more efficient. Now, I'm by no means a corset expert, but I have sewn a few to date, and I have to say that this is, so far, knock on wood, the most relaxed and simple of all those experiences. Because even though there are admittedly a lot of layers that I'm working with here, there aren't any extreme curves to match up. So I'm basically just matching the waistline, which is conveniently marked on the pattern here, and then the top and the bottom of every panel and pinning those together, sewing everything up. And so far it's been going quite smoothly. Another idiot proofing step, always doing a quick check after I've pinned my panels together just to make sure that I've got all those layers in the correct order. I know it seems silly, but that couple second check catches any errors before I sew all the layers together and potentially saves me several minutes of frustration and picking stitches. Now this pattern is originally meant to be worn with a busk, except that I don't actually have a busk on hand and I don't really want to order one for this project because it's just a Halloween corset. It's gonna get worn a couple times a year. So instead, I sewed the two front panels together without a busk and yes, I do realize this will make it more of a hassle to get into and out of, but again, it's just once or twice a year. So if you also don't have a short busk on hand or you don't really feel like the hassle of inserting one, some other options would be to include a zipper on the side or maybe just add some more grommets to the front to have a little lacing panel there. Both of these will allow for a more hassle-free dressing experience than the one I'm gonna have to go through. Ta-da! All right, so as you can see, it is all assembled and I know it's looking really rough right now. I would be pretty concerned, except that I do know from experience that it's gonna look so much better once all of these scraggly edges are trimmed off and it's got some boning and some binding. So that is actually exactly what we're gonna do next. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna need some grommets. Now I happen to have a ton of these because I do a lot of boot making. I make trapeze boots for circus artists. If you are wanting to get started and try some grommets of your own, I highly, highly recommend these. Now I'm not sponsored or anything. CS Osborne does not know I exist, but highly recommend these garments because I have used literally thousands of them and in some very high stress places on garments and I've never had any trouble with them tearing out. The downside is they do come in a limited color selection, but super high quality. I have never had a problem either setting these in or with them tearing out later after the fact. So the grommets went in really smoothly, just one small hiccup because I'm not used to setting grommets in tool. I'm usually doing it in leather or canvas. And so my very first one, I'm not sure if you can see, but right here in the corner, the tool didn't actually get caught under the grommet. It kind of snuck out the corner. So 
in all the rest of the grommets, I paid attention to that, made sure to catch all the loose edges of all the layers of fabric. And for this first one here, I'm just gonna go in with a needle and thread and sort of do a couple tacks around the grommet just to make sure that that tool doesn't start tearing or, you know, misbehaving. So now that everything is completely grommeted and ready to go, the next step is going to be boning. For boning, heavy duty zip ties work super well. They're a great budget friendly option for boning, especially on a corset like this, where there aren't any really intense curves that have to stand up to a lot of pressure. Unfortunately, I don't actually have any. I used the last of my zip ties up in my corset hoodie project from almost exactly a year ago, actually. So instead I will be using this. This is some synthetic whalebone, just because that's what I happen to have laying around my studio. However, the great thing about a short little waspy like this is that it is the perfect opportunity to get rid of, use up all of these tiny little leftovers that I have from previous projects. And that's kind of exactly why I hang on to all of my crafting debris because I usually find a way to repurpose it somehow eventually down the road, some way or another. I mean, that's kind of my thing, right? Like, that's what we do around here. So after the boning was in and my workspace cleaned up a bit, I could move on to the final step, which was adding the binding. This is definitely the step that makes the whole corset really come together, kind of like adding a good frame on a beautiful image. I cut this binding on a very slight bias to have a bit of stretch, but not waste a lot of material. And then I attached it like I do all of my bindings to one side by machine, then to the second side by hand. Originally, I was gonna make the binding from the black and the spider webs, but I actually found that the solid black framed out the corset a bit better and gave it a cleaner look. The fact that it was also easier to sew was simply a bonus. So a quick wrap up for a quick project. Would I recommend this pattern to a beginner? Yes. Absolutely, 100%. I think it's a really good beginner-friendly pattern. If this is your first corset, there aren't any harsh curves, there aren't any super long curvy seams, it doesn't have to fit over your busk, which always complicates things. Regardless of whether you're making it reversible or not, the welt method of assembly makes it go together very quickly and easily. And the only things that I would say to watch out for are one, be sure you remember to add your seam allowance into each panel and two, to consider what you want to do about the front and plan that out ahead of time. Will you be using a busk? then make sure you order it. Will you add some eyelets and lacing to have a second lacing panel in the front? Or maybe you wanna put a zipper in the side. Or maybe you'll just do like me and sew the front up and uh, suffer a little bit when you put it on. If you'd like to make this pattern, whether it's part of your Halloween ensemble or honestly just to add to your everyday wardrobe, be sure to let me know down below and tell me what your color scheme would be. If you've decided to make it reversible, let me know what your two sides would look like. But without any further ado, let's take a look at what my two sides look like. I 
actually made everything I'm wearing in this first outfit, so if you'd like to see my 24-hour fancy pirate shirt with smocking, it'll be right here, and my adjustable waist skirt is right over here. But if you want to see how well this corset matches the Sophie dress that I made it for, you'll have to wait till next week, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss when it comes out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in my next video.